Today is January 14, 2022. Today, we are going to see some really exciting footage of some enormous planets, eclipses in different ways that these are being hidden. The FAA image you are viewing now in the thumbnail came from the Yukon River Bridge. This object has to be very close to the Earth in order to see surface details like this. The gravitational force of large planets in close proximity to this Earth has caused the heating up and expansion of Earth's molten core, which in turn has caused an increase in volcanic activity worldwide, and also tectonic plate shifting, resulting in worldwide earthquakes. These images were captured by the East at Kean, Alaska as the light source in the sky passes close to one of the many sky lenses. It illuminates part of the sky lens. This is one way we know this cannot be a lens flare of the sun. A lens flare of the sun can never become partially illuminated the sun. These same images with contrast applied show the telltale edge rim of the sky lens. That's how we know this is a sky lens. These sky lenses are absolutely enormous and are in place to bend light and skew the viewing of the foreign solar system that has now intermingled with our own solar system. I'll replay these images with contrast because a small planet is actually passing behind this sky lens as we look at this in a couple of the contrasted frames. You can actually see this planet behind the lens, because the edge of the lens seems to lay over top of the image of the planet, making it obvious that this is a transparent lens with an edge. I just wanted to point this out because this is something that I rarely see in these images. So getting to see a planet pass behind. One of these sky lenses is a rare occurrence. The jet that you see, that's marked with an arrow in these images, is not a normal jet. I call it a jet, but it's actually something that works with the manufactured light in order to hide these eclipses. So the jet is a piece of equipment out there. Here are some older images from Reed Dog Alaska showing really good detail of these sky lenses. As you can see on the close-up image, there is always a characteristic edge rim on these lenses that isn't seen on any other objects in these FAA weather cameras. This footage from the southeast facing camera in Yukon River, Bridge, Alaska, starts out with a reflection of the shape bell. projector that is always present during these daily multiple eclipses. Our sun is being eclipsed by a gigantic planet. Thankful that you are not seeing this planet behind our real sun, 93 million miles away. Something appearing this large behind our real sun would have to be the size of our entire solar system. The reason it looks as if this planet is behind our sun is because the light passing in front of this planet is a manufactured light which has been shown many times in previous videos, most recently just two and a half weeks ago. On the December 27th video, the bell shape projector is always aimed in the direction of the sun, projecting a circular glare in that direction. To completely hide these eclipses, the camera at Grave Point, Alaska, also shows the bell shape projector now remember that we are seeing a reflection of the projector. The actual projector is too far to away to be picked up by these FAA cameras or by the naked eye. As the manufactured light passes over the eclipsing planet, the manufactured light in these images expands dramatically to engulf the planet in glare to hide it from view. Here's a better example of what we just saw. This older footage from the Joint Military Near Base. Anchorage. Alaska shows how the manufactured light engulfs celestial objects in glare to prevent viewing them. Just before the sun sets, two large celestial objects are visible in the bottom right corner of the screen. These objects have been blurred by technology. They're very blurry. As the manufactured light moves toward these objects, it completely engulfs them in glare.
causing the sun to appear very distorted. Something you may not have In seen. In the first few frames, this of. footage is a huge. I mean, this is a massive asteroid, and it's tumbling through space. It passes behind the manufactured light. Every single afternoon on the joint military base camera. But after I started showing this asteroid two years ago, the atmospheric chemicals in this part of the sky became extremely heavy, and this object is no longer viewable because of that. Last time I did a time comparison, this asteroid was dropping in altitude, but I haven't been able to do another comparison because of the very heavy atmospheric chemicals blocking the view of this asteroid. The southeast facing camera in Cake, Alaska shows a very interesting reflection in the water. This reflection is obviously not the real sun, but instead is coming from the manufactured light. The reflection in the water shows a very interesting shape that we know is not the shape of our sun. The south-facing camera in Isabel, Pass, Alaska captured a massive planet eclipsing the sun. In this footage, the reflection of the bell-shaped projector comes in from the right side of the screen. Throughout the entire footage, the projector is always aimed in the direction of the sun, projecting a circular glare to hide the eclipse of this massive planet. The eclipsing planet is very difficult to see through the heavy atmospheric chemicals. Even with contrast, it's difficult to see. And if you're watching this on a small screen, such as a phone, it's even more difficult to see. And as always, the manufactured light passes in front of the eclipsing planet while the real sun goes behind completely hiding these daily multiple eclipses we know that this cannot be a lens flare of the sun because in the very last frame this becomes lost behind the cloud a lens flare can never go behind clouds or other structures in a picture or a video Taken by the west-facing FA weather located camera, located in Sealy Lake, Montana, just the day before yesterday on August 13. As you can see on this map, Sealy Lake is located in the northwestern quadrant of state the of Montana. Each image in these videos is 10 minutes apart. We don't apart see much here in these images because the atmospheric chemicals in this area of Montana are so thick that they are blocking out everything that you and I are not supposed to see. Even with contrast applied, it's difficult to see the large closed That's planet. actually right there, smack in the middle of this image. In the last few frames, it completely disappears into the atmospheric chemicals. Out of sight, however, only 48 miles away is Missoula, Montana where the atmospheric chemicals were not as thick the day before yes 81 mile drive from Sala to Missoula it's only 48 miles away this same celestial object is much more clear when viewed from Missoula viewability of these objects depends upon the thickness of the atmospheric chemicals back to the Missoula Montana video here we see a very detailed celestial object with a fast rotation and very obvious we know this cannot be a lens flare of the Sun because of its fast rotation these are signs that we are living in the very we're living in the very last minutes of the last days this object can be seen from many including Mississippi, Colorado, Alaska, and other FA camera locations. This object was proven to be between the moon. In our video from February 5, 2022, it is eclipsing both the moon and the sun. As shown in that video from February 2022, that same video explains in detail how daily, but no one sees it. Here's a close-up of that same Viewed object from Missoula, Montana. Notice that many craters are on the surface. Also notice that located in the center of is each a white crater, plateau or mountain created by the impact of the asteroids pummeling the surface of this small planet. Take notice of the approximate of height. these white structures. They look very That's high. That's why they show up as a large in white In the middle dot. of each one of these craters, they're very high and they have to be in order high. to show up on these weather cameras. This same thing happens 
with craters on our moon. Notice the approximate height. Or plateaus in the center of the moon craters. It's important to notice. They are not nearly as high as the top edge of each crater. These structures are located in the center of each crater. But are crater. not nearly as high as the mountains in the center of each crater. On the image from the Missoula Montana a weather camera, these crater mountains can give us a rough estimate the of the size of this object. The smaller the celestial object the is, the lower its gravity, and the higher the mountains inside the crater. Small planets have less gravity than large planets. Thus the height of the crater mountains in the center of the craters on a very small planet would be much higher than the height of the crater mountains on a much large planet where the gravity is much bigger. Knowing this we can deduce This that. object is much smaller than our moon. If we compare the height of the moon crater mountains to the height of the crater in mountains in this image it would make sense to that say that this object is less than half the size of our moon perhaps about a thousand miles across a thousand miles in diameter our moon is 2,159 miles wide. Here is the same celestial object over a 21-month time period. The image on the left from the is, day before yesterday. The image on the right was taken 21 months ago. If we place two identical red lines across these two images, we see that the diameter is exactly the same on both of them. This celestial object is no closer today than it was 21 months ago, indicating that it is in a stable orbit around our planet. Another planet that was shown to be in orbit is the red planet shown here from the south-facing weather camera in Sitka, Alaska. These images were taken back in 2019 and images like from this Sitka, Alaska are no longer available with this clarity because this area now in Sitka, Alaska is under continuous heavy atmospheric chemicals. More images from the day before yesterday. In just a minute. I'll just let the images play, something that the Lord has upon my heart. While I tell you, just because God loves you, doesn't mean you are automatically going to heaven. God loves every person in heaven, earth and in hell. Yes, God loves everyone in hell. God doesn't send anyone to hell themselves to hell by, by rejecting, rejecting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The Bible says that neither life nor death can separate us from God's love. This means that God loves everyone in heaven and hell. He loves Adolf Hitler, Mussolini and Napoleon. He doesn't love what they did while they lived on this earth, but he loves their souls, which have gone on to their eternity. God loves every soul he creates. Whether it ends up in heaven or hell, neither life nor death can separate us from God's love, but we can choose to separate ourselves physically from God for eternity by living an ungodly life here on and this by earth. living in sin. When we choose a life of sin, we send ourselves to hell. We have no one else to blame but ourselves. It's a choice that all of us have. For those who aren't sure what sin is, sins are listed. The inbound planetary system that these objects came from is now close enough to cause a dramatic earthquake in volcanic activity and extreme weather worldwide. We are all seeing these signs that we are living in the very According last to the days. Holy Bible. In the Bible's book of Luke chapter 21 verse 25 Jesus tells us that when the end of the age is near, the close approach of this system will usher. We will see signs a world full of sin and abomination. Most people won't make it. The good news about all this is that faithful believers in Christ are not appointed to God's wrath, judgments, plagues, as stated repeatedly throughout the Bible. We will be protected from God's either wrath, either while we are here, or He will take His faithful followers out of here, which is also called the rapture. We have God's promise in on many this. places in the Bible. The New King James Version of Luke chapter 1, chapter point 21, verse 36 reads, Watch therefore, and pray, always that you may be counted worthy, to escape all these things, that will come to pass. Jesus is referring to God's wrath. He is saying that those who are counted worthy, will escape all of God's wrath. The Bible specifically tells us, that God's faithful followers, are not appointed to His wrath. To be counted worthy to escape his wrath, we must be living in holiness.
we had a 37% waning crescent moon. This means that the illuminated portion of the moon is getting smaller. Right now it's only covering 37% of the entire sphere of the moon or the circular portion. We can see most images from the south facing located in Toxoka Bay, Alaska show a full moon and not a 37% crescent moon even though they were taken just today. However, if we take a closer look at these images, what we see is actually a projection of the moon and not the actual moon. This always happens when the moon is being eclipsed by something. The moon projector cannot project a crescent. As we've seen in thousands of these photos, we can see a faint reflection of the bell-shaped projector that we've seen in countless numbers of these images. This projector is always creating a circular glare pointing in the direction of the moon. Now there's another one for the sun. And it points in the direction of the sun. Today we're focusing on the moon. The arrows help to point out the reflection of the shape projector. Now remember, this is a reflection of the projector and not the actual equipment. As you can see in the last few frames of this footage, once the projector has passed and the eclipse is over, we can then see the actual moon and its crescent shape. And here I made an enlargement of the crescent shaped moon near the end of this footage. All of the images of the moon from the Alaskan Faye weather cameras show the same projection of a full moon today. This morning, but for time's sake I've just selected a few.